and well as we do bring up our grid and this is our grid for our first race of the day then david jenkins on pole there in the man dgs and well he's going to be joined on the front row by none other than what will be stephen powell and well just joining me in the commentary booth as we go down the grid is none other than pointy himself pointy we see there michael oliver starting p3 stuart oliver alongside a family affair on row number two it's going to be a big one yeah i mean they've got three trucks running in that tent this weekend and the schedule is very very tight but of course, Michael being the uh, the breadwinner points-wise this season, uh, with uh, of course Stuart having a very bad start to the season. But uh, yeah, it's great to see both of them back out there. Next to each other, though, is an interesting start. It's I mean, who will he go? No, you've got the points, or will he go? No, I'm the dad. Oh, well, that's the big question. We'll have to wait and see. And then row number three is the partnership of, of course, what is John Bowler and Tom O'Rourke. We've also got Paul River and David Smith on row four. Row five going to John Powell and Adam Bint. Neil Yates and Simon Cole on row six. And Archie Handy and Ryan Smith completing at that grid. And Ryan Smith all the way at the back of the grid. And interestingly, five out of five wins at Fruxton. He's yeah. going to be starting off the hardest possible way today. Yeah, I actually spoke to him uh, in the paddock earlier on. Whilst his truck was being recovered, terrible starts the weekend. Niggly steering box uh, for testing on Thursday that got sorted out quite quickly and painlessly, but the turbo blew on him today, just into uh, into qualifying, uh, which means, of course, he's starting from the back. But this is something that the fans love to see at home here on the circuit, him fighting his way through the pack from the back. It's, it's, it's something to watch, I tell you. Oh, 100%. And we always love to see a last to first challenge as it's dubbed these days. Albeit, I can imagine it's going to get hot in those car, ca the truck cabins. I mean, it's getting hot in our commentary booth already, but we don't envy Super the fact hot. they're going to be absolutely <laughs> sweating out of the circuit. But oddly enough, as well, we've had a little bit of rain just before we've gone racing. So, I mean, it's just a spot of drizzle. Does that change the way drivers approach this? Uh, I mean, it depends. The drizzle, I've been out in it luckily all day, and I wouldn't say there's been enough moisture to actually change the track surface itself if it had got a bit of actual rain we would have seen slippiness drivers predominantly either like it wet or dry that bit in between is really slippy it's greasy anything that's coming off any of the other vehicles as well can start to turn into absolute slicks out there and it's not what they want so they can change setup when it's super wet super dry but in between it's all about skill and uh, a lot of the drivers like to say they're better in the wet but no one's good in the drizzle <laughs> oh 100 percent changeable conditions like you say at what nobody wants and particularly this fast flowing circuit in the midlands of the united kingdom i mean it's nicknamed the heart of british motorsport point it's right dead in the center drivers coming from all over the united kingdom to go race I mean, it is perfect venue for the trucks to go well race. this is it and not only this weekend the four 40 year anniversary of British truck racing of course Donington being the first place that hosted British truck racing 40 years ago and it's crazy to think that these guys some of these guys were going around this circuit before I was even walking this planet is is mind-boggling it truly is but what a show we've got set up today look at those guys starting to come down the track there we can see them lining up the, we've got the green lights out the pace truck has, uh, has, has set off in front of them drawing a bit of a lead away um, and they are they are poised. We, we had a very chill day in the paddock yesterday, set up on Thursday, testing Thursday. Yesterday was a quiet day. It was a, a contemplation day. Uh, it was actually nice to see some of the drivers just hanging out and spending time together. Um, but here we go now then. We've got the pace truck coming in. We've got the lights waiting to go out for our first race overall here at Donington Park. And it's lights out. It and is away poised. We go. The lights out. The power out. Adam Bint looks for an early wide line out there, but it looks like Dave Jenkins and Steve Powell aren't going anywhere. Dave Jenkins looks for a very good line there as Michael Oliver just loses out that first third place position to Dad Stewart. But John Bowler closing the gap. Could this be a force out in the early part of the race? Steve Powell all over the back of Dave Jenkins, but I think we are safely underway with no red flags on that first corner. No red flags, but still two wide coming down through the crane. The curves there was already at Smith charging his way in the number one. There's no doubt reason why he's an eight-time champion looking for that ninth title. And as they roar their way through the old hairpin, and we've seen a number of you saying hello from the old hairpin in the Bark YouTube chat, our drivers roaring their way up the hill all the way now in towards McLean's very shortly. And, well, so far, so good from all the drivers. Everyone's starting to line up. But one of the things about this circuit point is the fact we saw it at Fruxton. Fruxton, you need that back straight to be able to make moves albeit i say that and ryan smith making another move already dived to the inside ryan smith well known for climbing up those positions i mean we saw last weekend at thrux 
Anderson. He was pulling seven, eight, ten seconds ahead of the pack. Once he got that clean air, once he could sit down into uh, into that position, uh, he was he was untouchable. I mean, he was pulling ahead massively. Oh, 100%. And as our drivers roar the way towards the end of a first lap, and as they make their way down towards another lap, here they go again. Well, it is still Jenkins leading ahead of Powell, followed by Michael, Mike Oliver, then it's the son Stuart Oliver, followed by then Ryan Smith, then Bowler, then O'Rourke, followed by then Smith once again in the number 11. And then we've got River and Bink completing your top 10. Best dress is Cole at the moment as they head on to lap number two. Yeah, we, uh, we're all still looking for those positions. Uh, Ryan Smith, though, taking another position past John Bowler. I think we're going to see uh, P1 for Ryan Smith before the end of the second lap, I think. It's, it's, it's incredible driving skill. Uh, but luckily, everyone seems to be on best behaviour so far. Of course, we've got a huge pack of races uh, this weekend. Uh, International Truck Prix coming after lunch. So we don't want any incidents in this race if we can help it. Uh, and another two races this afternoon, of course, with, with uh, five uh, truck races tomorrow. And that's on top of everything else that's going on on the circuit as well. Uh, live music later on, uh, live displays. Oh, Ryan Smith now looking for a space past 10 times champion Stuart Oliver. Stuart Oliver, of course, in the temporary MAN, makes light work of that position. Great overtake. This is clean racing from Ryan Smith. That turbo is well and truly uh, back in top condition. Well, if anybody had any questions whether the car was going to be fully functioning, like you saw the engine, I should say, you're right there, pointed. He makes his way now into the final couple of corners, albeit not quite in the lead by the end of lap two, but now he's only got three more to strike off. And you can see him there already thinking about that move down in towards turn number one as he builds up the speed there versus the number 12 of oh, Michael Oliver. Will he get the move? No, he ducks back in. But as they all come down to the braking zone here, we're a little bit further back as well. We've got a couple of our class two drivers now starting to mix things up. Paul Rivet leading at that class as well as they make their way down into the Craner curves. Yeah, very good. So Ryan Smith now all over the back of Michael Oliver. Michael's not going to make this easy for him, of course. Michael doing very well this year as well. Uh, holding him back, but of course when we're in defensive driving, it's very difficult to attack the vehicle in front. So he's going to start to lose pace now on Steve Powell, which will give him and Jenkins a little bit of uh, time to uh, get away. But Ryan Smith really looking for that opening there, but can't quite make it stick. That the, the speed we're seeing from Michael Oliver this year in comparison to seasons before. Is, uh, is massively different. I mean, he's making it very, very difficult. GT, of course, uh, being the main sponsor for this team, but also a championship sponsor as well, and they've been with us for many years now. Uh, and, of course, the tyres are on all of the trucks out there uh, on Donington Circuit this weekend. Uh, and, of course, fantastic support from all of our sponsors. Total Care did a really great montage. And if you uh, follow the official BTRC Instagram page, you should check that out in the lunch break. Um, yeah, that is that is a, a, a cracking shot of what we got up to at Thruxton. Oh, 100%. Definitely worth checking out. And check this out. We've still got Michael Oliver fending off Ryan Smith. And Ryan Smith is looking left. He's looking right. He's being made to literally look all the way around. But they make the way down the start finish straight in towards Redgate. They're going to go look around the outside here. Now, Oliver, will he be able to stay fully there? No, he can't. And Ryan Smith just beats him on the brakes by smallest of margins. But he's finally up into P3. And he's been released. But look at that already. Jenkins, a three-second gap out front. And then we do have power. What is the best part? One and a half seconds ahead of Ryan Smith. So Smith's still got some work to do. He'll get there quickly, but whether it's going to be easy or not, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, this is it. I mean, uh, we uh, we saw a few different positions on uh, qualifying, which I didn't really think we'd, we'd, we'd get. Uh, but no, very light work for everybody involved at the moment. What we're watching now is, of course, we know Ryan Smith's going to be able to catch up most likely with Steve Powell, Dave Jenkins at the front. But are we going to see any more movement for uh, fourth, fifth and sixth further back? Uh, you know, two Olivers, the bowler, will they make it happen? Now, of course, back down in Division 2, we can't forget uh, Adam Bint returning in his Volvo white, ironically black. Uh, and uh, Paul Rivette doing very well there. Uh, three seconds um, ahead uh, I've been there at the moment and John Powell of course in the Greenhouse Group sponsored uh, truck um, that uh, did very well at uh, Thruxton as well but we've also got uh, Cole and Handy both actually from the same family Simon Cole and son Archie Handy uh, which is wonderful to see them racing together we are well over the white line there uh, trying to get up the inside of Steve Powell I'm not sure Steve saw him but of course, sometimes you just have to 
do something to make things safe, haven't you? The driver's not probably giving you enough room, but you can't just plough into them. You've got to go around them, haven't you? Oh, 100%. And Ryan Smith showing there he is what is off-roading expertise with those two wheels beyond the white line. Albeit, I think he'll be permitted to do that, given the close race in between them, but being able to make that move for P2. And that goes to show you the determination from Smith in trying to find his way up those positions one by one, or many by many on a given lap. Now just one drive between him and the lead. And that, of course, is Jenkins, three and a half seconds up the road and already on a charge and to put you in the frame of mind that last lap from Ryan Smith he was the best part of half a second faster than Jenkins up front and his average pace so far has been the best part of five to six tenths faster than his peers around when he's on a clear lap but like you say pointed there's also action further down the order including the ongoing battle for what is P6 between O'Rook and Bola with the fact they've only got four tenths between them and we may see them in the rear of the camera shot here as they make their way down the back straight but roaring the way down you can already see how Smith charging away from Powell there and I do wonder whether the Oliver family might now be looking at a final podium position and both be eager to try and take it on. This is it, Steve Powell might have a bit of problem there, uh, dropping back slightly to come to the chicane. You can see Michael is definitely gaining on him a little bit each lap. Uh, it was interesting to see you see them coming down the, uh, the pit straight there. Uh, it's such a great sight as well. I mean, the noise that you can hear, it, it doesn't do it justice what you can hear on this speed. You cannot experience it truly unless you are here in real life. But of course, we'll try and bring you all the angles we can uh, of these roaring machines uh, going around. Something, of course, we might not get a chance to show you on the stream this weekend is the Drift Trucks, which is a firm favourite at Donington's Convoy in the Park event, uh, and especially the Caravan Smash, which will be happening at the last live show tomorrow afternoon down in the live action arena. Uh, we've also got monster trucks doing passenger rides this weekend as well. Have you ever been on a monster truck ride? No, I've never been on one. Perhaps I might see if I can sneak a ride in. I tell you, I think you should. I mean, with racing uh, up until 7 o'clock each night, it'll be tricky to manage to get a chance to go uh, because you're going to have a very busy afternoon. Uh, obviously, we've got the main event, the trucks here. But uh, what, what if you had to pick one other sport here this weekend, uh, what would be your next favourite after the trucks? Oh, after the trucks. I mean, you're making it difficult. Can, yeah. I, can I just simply say pickup truck racing? Or Ooh, is that... uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> but otherwise, the thing I've truck related. For... Yep, truck related, no doubt about that. But I'm otherwise... looking forward to seeing my son down here tomorrow as well. My wife, Charlie's son, Henry. Uh, hello to you if you can hear me at home. Um, they'll be down here tomorrow looking forward to a full day's racing uh, and everybody of course that knows me is very looking forward to seeing them as well uh, the smiling face of my young boy uh, and, it's, and he loves the truck racing and I think he's very good a, a lot of family men here this weekend that give up their time to come racing with these teams and of course there's families at home you know that are supporting these things and, and looking after them and being there when they get back and there's a lot to be said for being the, uh, the family of uh, someone that works in racing uh, huge amounts of, uh, of sacrifice go into uh, the British truck racing and I think it's important to remember our, uh, our wives and other halves and, and uh, families and, and children back at home. Oh, indeed. And here's a moment to remember as well, as you're focused right now, ladies and gentlemen, on the battle for P2 in Class 2. This has been versus Powell, and Bin really holding on there as he gets a bit of a oversteer there, coming out of red gate, and here comes Powell looking to go down into the Karina curves. Too wide they go, albeit the number five of Bin will hold the position, but it's the number six of Powell that's absolutely flying, and don't count out behind them as well, the 33 of Yates, albeit Yates being in Class 1 and eager to make his way through. We also should make a mention, we did see Handy going quite slow in the class two number 40 a bit earlier maybe a problem there and well maybe coming into pits at some point to have that looked at we'll have to wait and see but there's brilliant battle in action even in class two at the moment as we look back to the front of the field Jenkins and Smith two seconds between them Smith's getting there but he's taking his time on this he is yeah I mean I think it, you know Ryan Smith has always been one to admit whoa look at that move there from Neil Yates up the inside Overcooks it a bit though, coming out of that bend, but still manages to make it stick past Adam Bin. Uh, back to what I was saying about Ryan Smith though, he always mentions the fact that they're here to put a show on. You know, he knows there's an audience, he knows that there's people here watching at home, of course, on the circuit. And, and you know, if you could do it in one lap, that wouldn't be exciting for anybody, wouldn't it? So he really does like to bide his time and, and make that overtake when it's going to have the biggest impact on the audience. And that's what you've got to love about Ryan Smith. He is a showman. All the way 
from when he first started racing down at Brands Hatch many moons ago in a Sisu uh, Boris, I believe the truck's name was. And uh, yeah, he, he came off at, uh, on the on the paddock hill bend, did a donut in the gravel. I'm like, this guy, this this is this is cool. We we need to see more of this. Of course, now eight years ago, eight-time British champion—that is incredible. Consecutive as well. Never heard of before. Very, very good racing. But he has closed that gap on Dave Jenkins now. He must have heard you. You've given him a kick up the backside as he looks for that line around the outside. Does it look the same from above as it does from in front? It's neck and neck. Who will get to that chicane first? Someone's going to have to back off. And it is indeed Ryan Smith making a very sensible decision, biding his time where there will eat. It's got to be another opportunity as he puts that power down, down the pit straight. But will he be able to make it stick before Redgate? That's the question. Oh, indeed. And as they come down onto another lap, not too many laps remaining with three and a half minutes left on the clock. Well, here comes Smith trying to look around the outside at Redgate. Can't find it. We do see a bit of brake dust kicking up there from the front right brakes. Really now having to try and use the anchors as much as possible. Bit falling off the car there, interestingly. Not quite sure what that was other than a bit of bodywork. But as they make the way down through the crater curves, Jenkins absolutely digging in here. I mean, credit to Jenkins where it's due in the fact that we saw Powell really put up a fight versus Smith. And now we're seeing that again here as they make the way into the old hairpin. But look how close. Smith is he's almost just being able to reach out and touch his rear bumper you've got to run this close haven't you pointy given the fact that these machines take time to build up speed yeah, every yeah. mile now is critical a lot of, lot of, lot of slip streams and uh, yeah this is it I mean it's literally coming to the point now where someone's going to someone's going to hiccup someone's going to blink and that's when the move um, is going to happen here it is and this is the moment Ryan Smith oh my goodness but no Dave Jenkins finds the extra legs as they go up the hill just out breaking Ryan Smith. This is top notch racing here. And of course, all the credit to Dave Jenkins for holding off the eight time champion. This is incredible to see. Dave, of course, been in the sport many, many years himself now and really showing that heritage of racing uh, skill that you really need to hold someone like Ryan Smith up. Um, don't forget, of course, they are trucks, not cars. You, yeah, you'll get used to that. You will. You yeah. Keep, you, know, you keep calling them cars, but you'll get there. You'll get there. It's okay, ladies and gentlemen. It's all right. You'll get there. <laughs> Indeed, I'll make sure not to keep saying it. In fact, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, if you want to play a bit of a game in the chat, put a count every time I say cart instead of trucks, and we'll see how cars. many. Yeah. Oh, goodness me. Although, don't take shots with regards no, to that no, many. No. I'll say that now. But yeah, as they're, they're not big cars. They're, they're, they're not big cars. They're trucks. There's a complete difference. Uh, hearing back from the studio, someone's opinion. I won't name his name. Um, but this is incredibly tight racing. There is not even a tenth of a second between these trucks. Dave Jenkins is literally holding on for dear life, uh, still looking for that continuity, that, that reliance of lap, whilst holding back Ryan Smith. This is where the skill is, this is where the craft is, the pressure that Dave Jenkins is up right now. But of course, we're about to catch up with the tail end of Division 2, which could cause both of them um, some issues. Handy going slightly wide there, locking up. Will Dave make it past? Will he cause an issue for Ryan? They're both past, but we do somehow have some damage on bodywork to Ryan Smith, but we've not seen any contact. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, we must have missed a bit of a rub, perhaps. But with, when you're this close, it literally is. You can't slow down because you'll lose the opportunity. Looking like we're going to get one more lap, though, with 26 seconds left on the clock as they cross the line. That's got to be the last lap flag coming out now, though. Oh, indeed. And as they make the way into turn one, well, on top of that as well. Oh, in the there we go. A bit more oh, touching. He is so close. He wants it. I mean, if he's not going to go round, he's going to go over pretty soon, I think. Oh, 100%. Ryan Smith frying everything at this. And just behind us, well, a battle between Powell and Mike Oliver for the final podium spot. But we're going to stay with the leaders here as they make the way down through the Craner Curves. And, well, as they roar down our two truck races here, absolutely giving it everything. Smith once again glued to the back of Jenkins, making the way up the hill now. Under Starkey's they go and up towards McLean's through the Schwann's Curve shortly. But as they do, here comes Smith. This time looking up the inside through Schwann's. Now, is he going to be able to get it done? No, Last it's not. Chance. It's Indeed, it's going to be like this is it this is it but he can do it we've seen crazier things happen um, but of course uh, Ryan Smith's tool sponsor Milwaukee uh, from Northside here this weekend as well so they'll be providing the tools to put this truck back together so it must be nice knowing that the team are ready to uh, rebuild 
but all oh, massive amounts of dust thrown up there as Ryan Smith just slips wide. This is neck and neck as we head towards the final chicane. Oh, on the brakes they go, and well, it looks so like Jenkins is going to have the lead out, but is he going to get it? Absolutely nailed on the power. Here they go. It's a drag race to the line, and well, Smith does get the power down, but is it going to be enough in time? And it goes the oh, way of Jenkins. I believe it. Dave Jenkins in the 69 takes the first place, the first, first podium. Has he had a podium this year already? I know he's had many podiums, but has he had the first? Absolutely incredible race in there from Dave Jenkins, holding off just till the last last minute it was neck and neck photo finish came back dave jenkins first ryan smith second steve powell taking that third and mike oliver so close with 0.5 behind that in fourth stewart in the uh, in the fifth crosses the line tomo rocks it john bowler seventh david smith in eighth as he comes across paul rivet takes the first position for division two uh followed by neil yates uh, finishing up the division one pack and then we see there in the in the smoky distance, Adam Bint returning to the British for the Donington Special Weekend, and he crosses very nicely. Oh. Just waiting uh, for the last couple of Division Two drivers. But I tell you what, I better go and do some pit lane interviews. So I'm going to leave you now. I'm going to press this red button and I'll leave you alone. All right, you can have your job back. Right. Sound good for Bye, you. everybody. Uh, trophies, of course, will be doing after the international race afterwards. So anybody watching this in the paddock out there, uh, do come and see the trophies after the next international race after lunch. Cheers, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> Pointy, a pleasure to have you join me in the commentary booth. I mean, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, the voice of British Truck Racing Championship himself as he roars out the commentary booth. And, well, what a race we've had to open up our weekend here at Convoy in the park. And, well, Jenkins taking that win by, in the end, five hundredths over Ryan Smith. An incredible, incredible finish. Now, I can see so many of you in the YouTube chat there absolutely enjoying it. And I can tell you, looking at the commentary booth window, the spectators were absolutely joyful dropping at moments there but here are the classified results and as we can see david jenkins after 11 laps of race and winner ahead of ryan smith overall in class one stephen powell p3 they're just bending off michael oliver stuart oliver p5 ahead of tom o'rook and then it was john bowler and david smith the top eight and then we had your class two winner paul rivet p9 overall ahead of neil yates rounding off the top 10. second place run up in class two was adam bin holding off simon cole and then both lap down we had john powell and also Archie Handy there. So we had 15 starters, fifth, well, in fact, 14 starters, 14 finishers when we get our mathematics right. And what a race. Fastest lap, of course, going to Ryan Smith on lap number seven, that 125.44. Starting from the back, made it to P2. And well, we've got plenty more to come in what will be our races later today. But there's your finishing positions, ladies and gentlemen, for the first race of this weekend in the British Truck Racing Championship. But as we look across the field there, the plenty on display, as Pointy was saying to us in the fact that we've got not just what is the racing out on circuit, but if you are here, it is an absolute carnival and fairground atmosphere, plenty of truck displays as well. And on top of that, plenty for you to get involved in, plenty of competitions out there. And also, don't be afraid to have a chat to the drivers and the teams, whether it be for the British Truck Racing Championship or other series that are racing this weekend, as everyone's absolutely open to have a conversation. And we're well, speaking of conversations, we we will in due course be getting some interviews and indeed those podiums for our first race of the weekend and well as our drivers get themselves out of the vehicles gradually what i can also say is it looks like the weather's actually holding off here that little bit of drizzle we had before we went racing does not seem to be coming back and as we do wait for those interviews to get underway we will after those interviews be taking a bit of a breather from the racing because we are now going into lunch it's almost as if this is the little teaser to get you warmed up before we go into the racing this afternoon but we've still got plenty more racing we've got the best part of another six races on our schedule this afternoon ladies and gentlemen and well we've opened up on an absolute banger in terms of the racing action and as we can see there with regards to what is our fans it is definitely one of the situations whereby everybody absolutely set and i can imagine now everyone absolutely hyped up for plenty more but we're just checking in to see whether we are good to potentially get those interviews and i think we are going to go down to pointy in fact ladies and gentlemen so he's already arrived so we'll take you to pointy Hi there, it's Magic, TV Magic. Here I am in Park Ferme straight after that first race. And what a race it was. Dave Jenkins 
Absolutely incredible race there. A great start. Ferocious finish. You've got to be happy with that result. Overjoyed. Yeah, brilliant. You know, Donington Park in the summer. It's, it's, this is just the best place to be, isn't it? And um, tremendous support from the family and the team and the sponsors, Diagraph Morris, everybody just couldn't be here without them. And, uh, you know, what a great race with Ryan that was then. I said this morning we were a few tenths too slow. I was expecting to be a little bit quicker in qualifying. Uh, I knew Ryan hadn't had a chance to release the beast yet. <laughs> so, they released uh, the beast for the first half of the race. I mean, he made up pretty much every position in the first two laps. But literally, as, as close as he managed to get to you each lap, you were like, no, no, no. Yeah, well, well you know, I tried to be super fair with him, stay on the track and just control the race at, at my pace from that point on. So I don't know how long we'd have got away with it for, but it seemed like yeah. 15 <laughs> minutes was enough. I think it was just right. I tell you, it was good, clean racing. Definitely the way we want to open convoy in the park this weekend uh, yeah fantastic result fantastic driving it what a show for all the spectators we've got yeah brilliant so uh, we've got a special 88 year old spectator come to watch us today so uh, he'll have a tear in his eye now won't oh, he shout out to him then very very good result Dave thank you well done uh, am, I just, am I correct that was your first P1 for the season is that right no, 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 I, no, no I'm terrible not, at math you, no, as per you're wrong please. obviously obviously yeah, well, we, uh, we had two at Brands and two at Pembury didn't we it was oh, just Oh, where we weren't quite ignore me. I only, I only d think about the last weekend. Sorry, Dave. Cheers, Dave. No, no. It's just so unmemorable. That's what. <laughs> Right, obviously, um, spirits are high in the Jenkins camp. Let's go and have a quick look over here, though. With, with all this stuff. You see the weirdest thing? We, we are holding this together with gaffer tape. I didn't see you two come together once, and yet all of a sudden, bits just start falling off. First of all, congratulations to Dave. Great race. His young George son, he said to me before we come out, he went, Ryan, will you let me dad win? I said, <laughs> I'm not going to let your dad win. He don't need no help from me. He drove faultless. He made no mistakes. The only bit of damage he got where he was on the in a straight line and he was slow. We didn't see it come normal. together it's at all. Racing right, line, yeah. he's making it slow. I'm chucking him up from behind. Uh, but that's what racing is about. Yeah, and yeah. Once we got to him, his brakes were overeating and we just didn't have that confidence to have a go at him on the brakes but fair play to Dave great win for him and his team and his family uh, I think it's a great start for what our team's overcome from qualifying well this is it I mean it's still a great start for you yes not the P1 you wanted but a podium second overall and to come from not even getting a lap in on qualifying is, is pretty impressive work for the team and that's that's um the team for you what they've put in to get me where we are today and we'll keep pedaling it it's harder than we're going to have thought because normally we're on the front up the front and unfortunately we're not but that's what god served us and that's what we'll deal with awesome well thank you very much thank ryan fantastic great start to the weekend nothing too major to go in let's have a look who else we can find then um it's not too bad i mean it's just fiberglass bit of glue a little bit of loctite around the edges i think you'll be absolutely fine uh, let's have a word then with our third place driver, Steve Powell, who'll be extremely happy with that result as well. Yeah, so here we are, Steve Powell, very good race for you. Let's see if we, where we can fit the camera in. Um, what, what a result, what a result. I mean, you know, it was a good start. Um, I think it was the inevitable uh, Ryan Smith early laps. I mean, he came past everybody. Right. It oh. was incredible. But you, uh, what, what, a, what a position to hold the whole race. Yeah, no, we had a blinding start up there uh, with Dave around the first. But you've got to be very careful you get fed out. Uh, I honestly can't believe how quick Ryan got through. I was expecting to see him in a few laps, but not that early. And then, uh, yeah, settled with third, really. A um, bit disappointed, but happy, very happy. The truck's good. The team had done a brilliant job, so, yeah. Now, you, you've obviously got quite a busy tent this weekend as well, haven't you, with the uh, with the truck pre. Uh, Jamie Anderson joining you in Neil Yates' truck. Uh, how, how does uh, how does Neil feel about sharing his motor? It's good. It's like we just bought the lorry off of Jamie, so we're getting a lot of input from the team. Also, for Neil, Jamie's helping me a lot. I mean, Stefan always helps us, so it's, uh, yeah, we're where we want to be, and it's, uh, it's different. We've got two new trailers, two new owners. It's been a little bit messy, but, <laughs> but for a better side, you know, yeah, but it's yeah. just literally getting used to it. We knew it would be a bit teething problems, but no, it's going generally really well. Nice bunch of lads, so happy to bring it home on the podium for the first race, so um, 
Yeah, let's see what race two brings. That's it. It's a team effort and what a great team. Yeah, three, three, first race, first trophy. It's a hell of a way to start the weekend. Well, Steve, we'll leave you to it because I'm sure you've got uh, a very short lunch break and then another truck to get out for the truck pre straight after, which, of course, we'll, uh, we'll have had a chance to speak to some of the drivers by now. I have to go and check the hog roast for tonight. You have to check the hog. There's a hog roast. If you're in Donington, don't bother. I'm having it. It's not yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Nice one. Right then, so uh, we look up now, then we can see all of the drivers um, still just mulling around. We've put these cones out, uh, notice, in the middle here. Um, this, of course, is to protect the racing line on the new layer of tarmac. To be honest, most of the fluid you see coming off these vehicles is only water from the water-cooled brakes, which everyone seems to think is smoke sometimes, uh, but it is, in fact, steam that comes off the brake discs when water is squirted onto them to cool them down. Um, Let's uh, let's see if we can find quite a distance up the old Division 2s are. But if we can get a, a little scurry on, at least we know that there aren't any Division 2 trucks going out in the next race. But it's great to see nine other drivers uh, with us here for the International Truck Prix. Really, really great to see so many returning faces. And that's what the whole ethos of the, uh, the Truck Prix was when... Uh, Truck Sport brought it back to Donington, being our biggest event of the year. Um, Dave Smith, we haven't seen, we haven't seen Dave yet this weekend. Um, how was that for you? Uh, possibly not where you wanted to be. To be fair, qualifying we broke the anti-roll bar, so we was two seconds of lap slide, and what was in practice, not ideal. So, <laughs> so to be fair, um, we was on the pace. Good. So we're oh, happy. That's good. We're happy. I think we've finished eighth, so reverse grid pole for the next one. Oh, that'll be exciting. Yeah, well, first one tomorrow will be, won't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. So first thing on a Sunday morning, and it's like, boom, there we go. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? But I know the pace is there, not quite on the front runners, but we should have a good race. I'm looking forward to it. I'll say, but very impressed by your uh, by your tent this weekend as well. I'm sure, I've been told by, uh, by, by Younger there that you've had it before, but... Again, I mean, Dave Jenkins has just pointed out that I've missed four of his first place trophies this year already. So, I, I mean, the fact I handed him them is it just goes to show how much attention I pay, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, um, yeah. Great setup, though, over at yours, which is it's nice to see. I think everybody's pulled out the stops for Donington? Yeah, I think what it, I mean, we had the setup for the beginning of the season, but we had we got the attire, we got the gilets in white, and I think everyone's just gone, wow, look at them. So. Yeah, they won't be white by the end of the weekend, though, will they? No, it's literally 10 minutes, put them on, <laughs> take them off. That's it, yeah. <laughs> take some photos. We were here, it's official. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Right. right then, well, Dave, thank you very much. Looks like we're all seem to be having a little, uh, a little mully around. Good to see you. We'll have him on the, on the microphone later on, I feel it. I can feel it coming. Uh, telling me all about the, uh, the backgrounds of the, uh, the trucks where they came over from Europe. Of course, most of these trucks, at one point or another, used to race in the FIA. Uh, some of them several years ago, some of them a few years ago. But there's quite a heritage behind a lot of these trucks. Uh, right, where is he? Here he is. Right. Have a lean on the seat with the, uh, a lean on here. We take two of us. I might take two of you. I don't know they take two of me. Uh, Paul Rivet, first race, uh, first place. Very good start to your weekend. You got to you, you've chuffed with that, right? Yeah, ticking the boxes. We wanted to tick, you know, fastest lap and uh, and first place. Not sure what happened to John at the end. That could be really good for our championship. I feel for John, obviously, um, but I'm pretty sure if you don't take the checker flag, you don't get your. So. Yeah, it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. Yeah, it's, it's a shame. I mean, yeah, obviously the decision will be made as and when. I'm sure we'll see it come down on the uh, the results very shortly off TSL. Uh, but yeah, it's, 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 it is unfortunate, is it? But that is racing. These things happen. I mean, it could have happened to you. It could have happened to him. It's, it's just unfortunate. Yeah, we've we've not had the best of luck, obviously, this year, as you know. You know, broken ankle, missed the whole round. Then we turn up at Thruxton Turbo going the first race. So it can happen to us all. And we're a mile behind in the championship. I'm not having even looked at the points. I just know we're a mile behind. So. Sometimes you just got to race and figure it out last weekend. For us, it's, it's just head down now and yeah. just win everything we can, basically. So um, that's that's the goal and see if we can catch up and, uh, yeah, see what happens from there. But, you know, our Napa truck flying once again. The boys have done a great job. They've been really hard at work on it between qualifying and uh, and that race, actually. We had a, had a few little issues that they've managed to sort out. And uh, so, yeah, great job from the team all round and, uh, yeah.
still That's smiling, it. of course. Still smiling? Well, you've got to smile. It's only first race Saturday. You've got a whole whole weekend of, of, of hell to get through, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have just been told off by Andrew, though, because he said you've only finished P9, which means we don't get pole for the first race tomorrow. So. Oh, dear. That, yeah. is ter that, is, that, is, that is a bad... That is terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although he'll be in... Yeah, uh, Dave Smith was very chuffed about his first place pole position start <laughs> tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's... Trophies all round though in Division Two this weekend because we've got five entrants, we've got three places. So uh, you know, there's certainly something for a lot more people to play for. Indeed, yeah, it's great to see Adam back in the championship. You know, he's a great guy, great driver, great competitor, and it's really nice to see him back out here. And uh, yeah, so going to enjoy racing with a with a few more trucks this week. That is good. Yes, yeah, certainly more of a challenge. Well, I look forward to speaking to Adam if we can find him later on.